Global Citizens, I am joined today by none other than Oscar-winning documentary filmmaker Davis Guggenheim. He is here in New York City supporting his latest film. He named me Malala, about everyone's favorite girls' education and world peace activist, Malala Yousafzai. Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Fantastic to be here. Can you talk me through how this film came to be? I read somewhere that the producers for the film got the rights to Malala's book. Walk me through that. Well, they originally got the life rights to make a movie, but then when the producers met her, they were like, who would play her? Mm. And she's so extraordinary in person, uh, they said we should make a documentary, and they called me. You probably weren't satisfied just doing a documentary adaptation of the book. I imagine you wanted to go in and find your own angle. Yeah. How did you find your angle on Malala's story? I wanted to make a movie about a girl who speaks out for what she believes. I imagined a girl in Japan watching this movie or a girl in LA where I live, or a girl in Pakistan watch this movie. And the idea is, she's so extraordinary that girls would say, I could never be her. And the truth is, she was anybody. And you can still see her now. She's online looking at pictures of Brad Pitt and her favorite cricket player. She is an ordinary girl. She became extraordinary by the actions she took. And that's what's so relevant about the global citizen idea, is that we need more people to speak out. We need more people to raise their voice. And what's interesting is when you start to raise your voice, you become more powerful. And you see that with your group. You see that at the festival you had in New York this year, that when people do speak out, people listen. And we need more people to do that. You must have spent so much time cultivating the relationship that yeah. you had, with yeah. not only with Malala, but with her whole family, of course. Her father is a big part of this film as well. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like encountering Malala and her family for the first time? I had met a few Muslims in my life and had interesting conversations, but I never really went deeply into the home of a Muslim family. It felt like a foreign culture that was a little bit, frankly, scary. But when I met them, it was the opposite. You'll see in the movie, they're irreverent, they're hilarious. She's constantly fighting with her brothers. I talked to her yesterday, she's like, I still am angry at you for making that movie because you show my brother's point of view. You know, She still fights with her brothers. And, and you realize that their kitchen is like my kitchen. You know, they dress a little differently, they have different customs. But when you're there, it feels like it could be any family. The media portrayal right now, I think, especially in the U.S., of Islam is mostly negative. You have ISIS running around. You have all of these conflicts in the Middle East. But you have, in your film, a beautiful portrayal of Malala's personal faith. What's the takeaway you hope on the role of faith in Malala's life? Well, imagine if you were shot and almost died. Imagine if your daughter was shot and almost died. Imagine if you were one day you're living in a town in Pakistan and then suddenly you're, you can't go home anymore and you live in a foreign country. You might feel incredibly angry. You might feel bitter. You might just say, screw all this. This family has been through everything. But when you're with them, you realize how grateful they are. And she talks about forgiveness. And a lot of people who we meet talk about forgiveness. But they live the idea of forgiveness. Malala forgives the men who shot her. Her mother prays for the boys who shot her. I think there's a strong message in that that comes from Islam. If you're not better informed, you can believe that the Muslim world is a dark, scary, horrible place. What you realize, what I realize as an American, that the Muslim world is very peaceful. We think the news stories about ISIS or Al-Qaeda is the story of Islam, and it's not. In fact, the more you know this film, you realize that ISIS has hijacked Islam. This is what Malala's father says. They use the pretense of their faith to become powerful. And we as consumers of news need to go past the surface. What Malala stands for, her quest for education is such a global issue. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's 60 some million children worldwide out of school. That's an issue that global citizens care about undoubtedly, but it can feel big, it can feel overwhelming. What's your message then to people who watch your film, who love Malala, who are inspired by her work, still feel overwhelmed by the problem? What would you say to them about what they can do? It's a great question. It feels too big for me. You know, how do I help 66 million girls? The answer is you can't, but you can do the small things and you can do the specific thing, which can become big. They can become big for that person and they can become big for you. There's a, the Malala Fund, which is Malala's organization, and they are specifically building schools for girls in specific places. And it's what's exciting about it is that it's in, in, in this complicated world, it's the one thing that we know works. You know, climate change is very complex, and it's very hard to get, wrap your hands around. But the one thing we know works is educating a girl. When you educate a girl, it not only transforms her world, 
her family, her brothers, her father, her village, the economy of countries change when girls are educated. They're either going to be a child bride or they're going to become a world leader or a productive citizen. Global citizens, if you needed another reason to care about girls' education worldwide, I think, Davis, you just gave a really eloquent reason why this is such an important issue and it follows such an important film. I would encourage everyone to go out and see it. Davis, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thanks.